had a chance to look at four different parts kits here. We've got a, a Mahdi kit from Egypt, a Bulgarian kit that's a 74 with polymer furniture, another Bulgarian kit that's a 74 with wood furniture, and then a Yugo uh, in 762 by 39 uh, with some of the uh, characteristics of the Yugo kits. So since we have all four of them here to uh, compare and contrast, let's take a look at them. Let's talk about bolts. So we know that the bolt on a 545 is going to be skinnier than the bolt on a 762x39. Let's see if there's any difference between the old bolt and the new bolt. So except for wear and grit and grime and that kind of thing. Bunch of... Cosmoline on this one, but otherwise not. Interesting that they serialize the extractor even on both of them. So little skinny bolt, big fat bolt, more you know bigger, fatter caliber, whatever older design. Uh, different shape on the extractor. Otherwise similar shapes, however different specifics. Like they all have the same general design, uh, but different specifics. When we compare the Egyptian and the um, Yugo, again, similar, but a little more crude, a little faster assembly probably, a little faster construction, but uh, even some of the little nuances, some of the little extra grinds and things that probably provide just a little dwell, or maybe just a little effort or a place for debris, uh, all are in there. So lots of interesting stuff here. And firing pin nice and soft, firing pin super strong. Holy moly, like that's not going anywhere. So that's everything top-wise, I think, minus springs and that kind of thing. We do have a couple of springs out. Here's a hammer with its uh, du co dual coil spring from the, seven, the 74 and a Bulgarian hammer from the uh, Egyptian 39. Very similar again, similar shape, similar weight, going to be probably uh, tough to determine which one's which, except that I knew which hand I had them in. The springs get pretty gross right away, but that dual coil ends up lasting pretty long. I guess I didn't mention the springs on the, the recoil spring, but they're all the same here. There are some older ones that are dual coil, which are kind of neat to see. So that's the top of the gun. Now if we start to go down uh, from the back, that rear trunnion, we're gonna get into the stock. So got an underfolder stock here, which is pretty neat. Uh, very complicated, there's this bag of parts right here. It's sort of like a solo cup with another cup on top of it, another thing that comes in and there's some slots and pins go when you have the slots in the right place. And then there's a button. So it's all about some different cylinders that fit into each other and kind of a cool puzzle. It's not that strong, but uh, you end up with a, uh, uh, <clears throat> a uh, stock that disappears with the gun, still gives you complete control of the uh, charging handle. It's easy possible to still use the selector you got to fiddle a little bit but the rest of the gun is good to go it doesn't snag it's just a basically invisible for right-handed shooters you just use your thumb and push down or in on the button and then it starts to drop you let it go out and the button's going to pop back out when it gets to full place again that's sort of a bunch of different cylinders there that have some springs and some kind of a combination lock of pins so when it's in these two positions the button can come back out you can push the button Anywhere in between though, it's just kind of free floating. So you'll see a lot of times when people are actually in the using these things, the stocks are kind of flopping around and I'm sure that wasn't by design, but it's a, it's an element of them. There's this little piece here that you'll find on all the stocks. And uh, what I find most people do is take a piece of surgical tubing and cut it, put it in there and possible kind of pinch it so that that piece of surgical tubing there provides a little bit of a rubber bumper as it hits the underside of your uh, stock up there. So that way it'll be a little quieter and depending on how tight everything is with the receiver and the alignment of everything, 
it'll come up and that rubber will be nice and tight and the stock will stay quiet and strong in place. And you only get it down and pull on it deliberately. So the underfolders don't give you much cheap weld. People tend to hate them because while they're kind of wide, they're so low compared to the sights and everything. So I think of the AK as a two points of contact gun and sometimes three. And if you don't think of it as, you know, being three points of contact required, then uh, you don't have to fight with the AK so much. Of it. And I might be missing a couple of other things, but those are getting beyond the realm of parts kits and beyond the realm of the differences and similarities between these parts kits. So I hope you've enjoyed this tour. These parts kits are going to auction, so uh, I had to do this one before they left us, but hopefully they'll pay a bunch of bills off and we'll get back on the road and experience more of our gun community out there. So if you have any questions, let us know. We did take quite a few pictures of these and uh, we can potentially answer some questions uh, through those pictures or uh, other examples out there. We do appreciate your time and as always, thank you for watching. GearWebsites.com is your source for firearms-based playing cards and books. We also have mugs, shirts, and posters with designs that we've made live. Of course, we have patches. Every Friday is Free Patch Friday. We appreciate your support. Thank you for shopping at GearWebsites.com. Thank you for supporting our projects. If you'd like to buy us a cup of coffee, check out our Patreon channel. The guys and gals at GunWebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year. Practice at least once a month and carry every day. Thank you for watching gunwebsites.com. Do 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 do.